How is everybody doing today? My name is Alan Roberts. Today we're going to talk about how the BMI uh, is now completely debunked and nobody should ever listen to it and it was racist to begin with. It's just ridiculous. Uh, the, the things that people are saying uh, about these things. Um, for those of you that don't know, we'll get to that topic in a little bit. For those who don't know, we offer coaching. I've shared the link. It's daily communication, weekly video conferences. We are going to discuss in this video one of the things that I have been saying for, in fact, years. I'm. It's like getting extremely old that for some reason some dumb meathead uh, with tattoos all over himself is somehow years ahead of medical psychics. Um, it's just, I. it's like this long ass tour of I told you so, uh, and I'm enjoying every second of it, but it is all shit that I've said before. I will point out how this is being used as a way to try to like actually build racial like tension. It's so next level ridiculous, but, uh, I'm going to say hi to everybody, and then we are going to discuss, we're going to have a long Q&A session today about just about anything you guys want to talk about, but we are going to talk about how um, the BMI is completely dead, and you should use waist to height ratio instead. Um, we're also going to talk about how the obesity paradox is also dead from this data. Uh, and for those of you that don't know what the obesity paradox is, there was this hypothesis that being fat actually even though it led to greater instances of cardiorespiratory issues, that once you got those cardiorespiratory issues, you had a better chance of surviving from the cardiorespiratory issues um, because you were fat. Uh, and it was just complete ridiculousness. The, the obesity paradox was something that fat people said to make themselves feel better about being fat. Uh, it's just complete lunacy uh, to even talk about. but. Uh, I'm going to say hi to everybody and then I'm going to do my pitch and then we're going to do, uh, then we're going to talk about how this stuff is literally exactly what I said it was. I'm, I'm just getting, it's so, it's so insane. It's just insane. Uh, Darlene Bits, I need the color back. I have no idea what you're talking about, Darlene. Uh, I wish I could make, uh, I wish he would make products for kids. I will not make products for kids ever. The, uh, I, I just, that's. I, I don't think we know about enough about stuff like that. Have your kids eat healthy. And if they eat by the hunger management method, which is basically avoiding processed carbohydrates and processed sugars, I believe that will help them out tremendously. Uh, thank goodness this is live at 12. You must be on central time. But Elizabeth, how are you doing? Martina, how are you doing? Anna, what's going on? Uh, hello from Del Carmen, Mexico. What's going on, handsome bee wonder boy? Uh, Betsy, how are you doing? Uh, I'm going to, I, I'm going diving in the you know, this some That's, that's very cool. Uh, refill your water bottle. I am, this is second gallon. I got done with 45. It was 46 minutes total time with 45 seconds of rest of basically, uh, shoulders and a little, just a little, I do a little bit of chest every single day. Just if I do pull, I do push. Um, for uh, for the people that joined me too. We had multiple people join me uh, for this workout today. If you want to join me, you can uh, join our app, which is right here, by the way. Uh, you can join me on the app, the app to 5K right here, or you can just get monthly coaching or three month coaching or six month coaching. If you are morbidly obese and you have yo-yo dieted a bunch of times, you can dedicate three to six months of your life to try to build healthier habits to help escape the prison of morbid obesity that you keep bounding back into. Our coaching is done with daily communication, weekly video conferences, and we try to teach people how to, in fact, adjust their lifestyles bit by bit by bit as they keep going on in life, too. The idea is that once you get to a healthy weight, you can stay at a healthy weight no matter what your life changes because we teach you the tools of assessment that you would need in order to try to be healthy. So uh, please do check that out. Slash to Kim, what's going on? Bets, uh, Betsy, how are you? Lori, what's going on? Velvet Slade, how are you doing? By the way, this is no morbidity. No morbidity is right up here. It is a non-stimulant, non-thermogenic based appetite suppressant. It has four ingredients at clinically tested human doses. They have, so we can make the claims of better uh, diminished waist circumference, better BMI, which we're going to talk about BMI, better stress relief, um, visceral, uh, uh, vi more fat from the weight loss than muscle mass from the weight loss. Then without it, because it has an ingredient called thinogen, which uncouples the protein 1 NAs from 
uh, adipose tissue. So your body is more apt to go towards the free floating fatty acids that it can access than trying to break down muscle. So you retain more muscle mass while you're losing weight in a caloric deficit. It also helps you burn more fat while you're sleeping because again, you're in a caloric deficit and it's going to the free fatty acids. Um, and then alchemy, I'll be talking about very soon. Alchemy is going to be sold at these same very places because it is going to be picked up by vitamin shop. We just found out, uh, but it is going to be uh, basically the yin and yang to no morbidity. This over here blocks the biological mechanism of hunger, producing ghrelin in your stomach. So you have diminished hunger and you just don't really feel that hunger. But this helps with glycemic response, insulin sensitivity. It is going to be fabulous for women with PCOS. There are patented ingredients in this that make so we can make the claim that yes, there are patented ingredients in this that have been shown to be just as effective, if not more effective, as metformin for women with PCOS than, uh, than you know, without all the side effects. But also, it's just good for anybody that needs blood sugar regulation, insulin sensitivity. I personally love it because I no longer crave sweet things at all. I just have no, phys I have no physical hunger and I have no cravings at all when I'm on these two items. So this will be uh, likely uh, you know, a little less than a month from now or about a month from now. So keep your eyes peeled. I'll be doing full videos about it. Annie, how are you doing? Hannah, how are you? ID Batty Wings, Erica, Uncle John, uh, Christian, Cactus Patch Cookies, Eloise, Sabrina, Ther uh, Teresa, Melissa, Nick, how are you? Finished my workout. What's going on, T. Nicole? How are you? Kimberly, Ed, Dog, hey, Kylie Wyote. I like the name, Kylie Wyote. Um, Witch Meat had Fenex. Very funny, very funny, very funny. Uh, Andy X, Chris Sullivan, Jessica, how are you? I hope you had a great workout with uh, Crystal after my work your workout with me. Fucking animal. Kelly, how are you? Nick, the obesity paradox was false from the beginning. It really was. Saver, many fat patients die young. I see this daily. It's really sad. Um, Vlad, how are you doing? Crystal, how are you doing? Uh, this man speaks the truth. 50 years of a strong sugar addiction is now under control with the help of no morbidity and nutrient driver and Alan Roberts. I owe his, I, I owe, uh, his my life because he saved it. Jane, thank you very much. I appreciate it, but you're the one that just took the advice. You did this on your own, but I'm very happy that your sugar addiction is under control. No morbid and weight, no morbidity and nutrient driver works amazing. No morbidity and alchemy. I'm telling you, it's just next level. It's next level. I'm so, so happy for you. Tiger, excuse me, Tiger, Shy, Carol, Anna, uh, Gretchen, Sheeny Beanie. Uh, kids don't need products, just whole foods and out for time. I agree. Uh, Erica, how are you doing? Least interesting in the world. Janet, Luz, Luz Upcycles, Luz. I like the name. Uh, welcome to another one. Oh, well, thank you. Hexred, Angela Rose, uh, treating myself to a delicious salad, no dressing, just a bit of olive, uh, olive oil and salt and pepper. Oh, so good. So good. Christian, the captain, Kucha, Kucha. I almost said Kuchi, but anyway, uh, three minutes late. We're just, we're just saying hi to everybody. Matt, what's going on? Uh, Tiger, uh, when's the alchemy guy coming, uh, the alchemy coming, the alchemy is, should be coming in within the next, uh, three to four weeks. Carol, perfect evening, uh, stationary bike workout and, uh, live Alan. Thank you very much, Carol. I appreciate it. Lady Hawk, how are you? Uh, and Shinaz, what's been going on? Hendo's, uh, and I lost eight pounds uh, of body fat in the last two months. However, two pounds of muscle. I need to get that up. Uh, resistance training, resistance training, resistance training. All right. So. There's been many articles recently about how the BMI is, in fact, racist. Uh, I just find it so fucking, like, it's so stupid. I, 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 it bothers me so much. Uh, if you take a look, I think CN, Mark, Mark Lobliner, my good friend Mark, uh, who I'm partners with with all these things, uh, did today, I, I, believe it's, I believe it's released right now. I don't know if he released it yet, but he sends, he sends me videos ahead of time. Um, about how CNN is basically saying that the BMI is racist. Uh, here's, uh, the AMA adopts a new policy clarifying the BMI, uh, as a measure of medicine in Chicago, the delegates of the annual meeting of the American Medical Association, who, by the way, are completely pharma shields and all, all of them are paid for. They've no souls, um, whatsoever. Um, but, uh, house delegates adopted a, a policy aimed to clarify how body mass index can be used to measure in medicine. The new policy was a part of the AMA Council of Science and Public Health Report, which evaluated the problematic history of BMI. Problematic history. The word problematic. Holy fuck. Like the 2020s, we have used problem like, oh my God. The word problematic is just, oh. The problematic history uh, of the BMI and explored alternatives. The report also outlined the harms and benefits of using BMI 
and pointed to the uh, to BMI as an imperfect way to measure body fat in multiple groups, uh, given that it is not does not account for differences across racial, ethnic groups, sexes, genders, and age span. Oh, genders. Oh, geez. Oh, 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 oh. The woke mob is going to be coming for the AMA. Oh, no, the woke mob is going to be fine with this because all of a sudden they think that what they're saying is that BMI is racist, and that's what they've been trying to say. But... Uh, given the report findings, the new policy supports AMA and educating physicians on the uses, uh, the issues of BMI and alternate measures for diagnosing obesity. Under the newly adopted policy, the AMA recognizes issues with using BMI as a measure due to its historical harm. Historical harm! Uh, its use for racist, uh, racist exclusion and because BMI is based uh, primarily on data collected from previous generations of non-Hispanic white populations. Due to significant limitations associated with the widespread use of BMI in clinical settings, the AMA suggests that it, it be used in conjunction with other valid measures uh, of risk, such as, but not limited to, measure of visceral fat, uh, visceral fat, body adipose, bad, body adiposity index, body composition, relative fat mass, weight circumference, and genetic uh, metabolic factors. The policy noted that BMI is significantly correlated with the amount of fat mass in the general population, but loses predictability when applied on an individual level. So basically what they're saying is that... Um, uh, basically, what they're saying is that it is good for the population level. So population level data, meaning that if you are a BMI of 35, you are super fucked. Um, that still holds. But on the individual level, you being the BMI, because you are going to be the exception somehow. Uh, like you fat fuck uh, who hasn't seen your own penis in like a year. Yeah, you, you, you are the exception to the rule. You're a BMI of 35, but somehow you're healthy because you're the exception, even though uh, at the population level, they're saying it's okay. This, the thing is, no matter what this was originated for, no matter what the BMI, the, the, the body mass index was originally in, you know, conceived for, the correlative data from decades upon decades upon decades, which is inclusionary of different races, ethnicities, sexes, genders, blah, 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 sex and gender, same thing. I know that upsets a lot of people, but um, the... The inclusion of those things is, in fact, decades worth of research. However, I myself, the angry bald man, has, in fact, said on multiple occasions that when we talk to our clients, we much prefer the waist to height ratio. And people can say, well, why would you prefer the waist to height ratio? And I would say, well, because it is a more close measure of adipose tissue uh, that is in that is viscerally located, the visceral fat in your belly. So in reality... And we are what we were about to show on many, many, many ways that we have known for a long, long, long time, because apparently the AMA doesn't do any research, at least to the level that I do research, because holy fuck. I mean, it is I, I mean, it is. Amazing to me. I have done this research for fucking years now, for literally years, and the AMA, the titans of integrity and pharmaceutical shills that they are, is just getting to it. Let's see, the policy noted that the BMI is significantly correlated with the product, the blah, 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 the AMA recognizes that relative body shape, um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, wait, I lost my place. The policy noted the BMI is significantly correlated with the amount of fat mass in general population, but loses predictability when applied to an individual level. The AMA rec also recognizes that relative body shape and composition differences across race, ethnic groups, sexes, genders, and age span is essential to consider when applying BMI as a measure of adipo adiposity, and that BMI should not be used as a sole criterion to deny appropriate insurance reimbursements, because this is what it's all about. It's about the money. There are numerous concerns with the way the BMI used to be measured, body fat, and diagnose, uh, di diagnose obesity, yet some physicians find it to be a helpful measure in certain scenarios. And the AMA uh, said AMA immediate past president Jack Resnick it's important for physicians to understand the benefit of uh, limitations of using BMI in a clinical setting. Okay, I completely agree. This is also the unethical use of BMI. This is in the British Journal of General Practice. Uh, and this one is like basically a big virtue signaling fucking thing. This is an article, by the way. This is not a study. This is an article. Uh, so it, even though you can be put in PubMed, it is, still can be an article. Big bones, fatties, it's all this bullshit, all the bullshit. No one really benefits from the increasing unhealthy society and general practices can certainly do more to help address the problem of obesity and the diabetes and, and the diseases it can cause among the ethnic troops. At first, at, at first step would be to rethink the use of BMI among the Asian community. So that's all this one really says. 
But now we got this other one of uh, obesity. Avoid using BMI alone when evaluating patients, doctors say. And this is, again, this is uh, from the uh, uh, BMJ. Doctors should no longer use only body mass index when assessing patients with, for overweight obesity. The American Medical Association decided that it's, uh, at its annual meeting in Chicago. The new policy criticized the use of BMI because body shape and composition differ across race, ethnic groups, sex, gender, and age, as we've talked about here a couple minutes ago. So basically what they're saying is this should not only be used. Um, I completely agree. And here is why. Uh, let's go to this one. I don't know. Obesity paradox debunked. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but here is the one. Is this it? No, this is the one I wanted to go by. This is from 2017. Just in case anybody was wondering, I had this saved on my fucking hard drive because I actually do my goddamn research. Uh, it's just amazing that a, a lot of people don't. Uh, calculated person's waist to height ratio is, is the most accurate and, and efficient way of identifying whether or not they are at risk of, of risk of obesity in clinical practice. A new study by Leeds Becker University shows. Now, the reason why you, this has not been universally adopted is because people will fucking throw a hissy fit about being having their waist measured uh, in the doctor's office. But also it would, in fact, make it so a shit ton more people would be listed as obese while people like me who I'm technically overweight still by my BMI would be listed as healthy. And that's the fucking truth. Every like, you know, lean gym bro I know would be considered healthy. Whereas people that are the same, like there are, are, there are guys that weigh less than me that are at my height that we listed as morbidly obese because they are in fact built like Homer Simpson, like most of American men, because most of American men are in fact pussy ass soy boys who have fucking eaten their way to fucking, sloth-like tendencies, even though they might be at a, a healthy weight by BMI. But if you take their waist to height ratio, if you're five foot nine, five foot 10, that means that you need to have a waist circumference below 35 to 34 and a half, uh, 35 inches. And most American men, when you measure their waist circumference, two inches above their belly button, the center of their, the center of their stomach are at like 38 to 40. It's fucking pathetic. Most American men, the vast majority, like what this would see is what I have been saying for a long time. And we've known this since 2017, 2018, that in fact, the vast majority of the American population would be considered obese and morbidly obese, morbidly obese and the vast majority of the population being obese by waist to height circumference uh, ratio flat out. Flat out, I told you so. I've been telling you so for years. I told you so. The research published, uh, published in the latest uh, edition of the PL, PLOS1 journal aimed to improve the way that obesity is currently measured and classified by examining a whole body fat percentage and visceral adipose tissue fat mass that's stored around the abdominal region where most of the internal organs lie. A group of 81 adults, 40 men, 41 women, uh, it's aimed to find the most accurate way of predicting the, this measure in a clinical environment and set, and set cutoff points for obesity. The researchers, led by Dr. Michelle Swainson, uh, senior lecturer in exercise, in exercise philology at Carnegie School of Sports and Le at Leeds Beckert, found that 36.5% more adults would be classified as obese using the whole body fat data, one, of, one in two participants, rather than body mass index, around one in seven participants. The team gathered accurate whole body data and abdominal fat data using a total body duality energy x-ray absorption uh, DEXA scanner, um, a highly accurate way of measuring body composition and fat content. Then they calculated five predictors of whole body fat uh, and VAT, which could be easily replicated in the GP's office, the fitness center, or at home compared to results of those of the DEXA scan. The five predictors were tested were BMI, waist circumference, waist to hip ratio, waist to height ratio, and waist to height, uh, uh, waist to height ratio 0 .0, uh, 0.5. Dr. Swanson explained the conventional measure of obesity used by GPs is BMI. Although there are benefits to this method, there is concern that a lot of people are being classified as obese by BMI when they are not, or that are being missed by this classification when they need to be referred to for help. This is most definitely the case when people have a normal BMI but high abdominal fat that is uh, often dismissed. As I've said, often dismissed. The whole body fat percentage and uh, specifically 
that mass are associated with health conditions, including insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and are, not, and are not fully accounted for through BMI evaluation. Carrying fat around the abdominal area has been shown to be the independent predictor of all-cause mortality in men and women. Uh, put simply, it is more important, especially for cardiometabolic conditions, that your belt notch goes down that, than the readings on the scale. The results showed that the best predictor of both whole body fat percentage and fat in both men and women is the waist to height ratio. One more time, everybody, say it with me. I told you so. Um, it's just mm. the simple waist, uh, waist circumference divided by uh, height measure is not a new method of obesity classification, but despite evidence supporting its issue, it is not, not routinely measured in clinical settings. Cut points for uh, participating in whole, bo in whole body obesity were 0.53 in men, 0.54 in women, with the cutoff point being pre uh, predicated of normal obesity was 0.59 in both sexes. So if you are above 0.59, you are morbidly obese. If you are above 0.53 as a man and 0.54 as a woman, you are obese. Morbidly is 0.59 and up or, or 0.6 and up and, or anything over 0.59 and 0.53 for men and 0.54 for women. BMI has, has weak, uh, had weak support as a predictor for whole body fat percentage in both men and women, but it was plausible alternative uh, for the prediction of fat mass in women. So it's what I've always said too, by the way, for women who are just like, oh, it was it, it doesn't take into account we're women and everything like that for BMI. Uh, chances are that if you are classified as obese by BMI as a woman, you are super fucking fat. Because you are supposed to be smaller frame. You don't carry the same muscle mass as a man. You don't have the same bone structure. Your bones aren't even as dense as men because there is a difference between men and women. I know we're trying to forget that, but there is a difference between men and women genetically. Anyway. Dr. Swain stated that our waist to height ratio cut points align broadly to current guidelines. The adults and children should keep their waist circumference to less than half their height. So if you keep it to half your height, you are pretty good. You're doing pretty, pretty good. In current clinical practices, it is common to calculate BMI for indications of whole body fat and waist circumference for ad, uh, abdominal obesity. Our research has shown that waist to height ratio is more a uh, more accurate alternative to these two measures and also more time efficient measure. By introducing this alternative and more uh, a more accurate measure into clinical setting, more men and women would potentially be referred to programs such as weight management and receive help in improving their health. We have also shown that these simple measures may be used as surrogates by GPs and others, healthcare professionals, when DEXA scans are not readily available. Even in small sample of adults, our results prove further evidence that alternative measures are fundamentally more accurate uh, identification of obesity, therefore ensuring that individuals are referred to the most suitable therapeutic approach. Okay, boom, boom, boom. All right. So here's all the data, by the way, that, that you would be looking for. So waist to height ratio versus BMI, which is a better predictor of health. This is also, for years, Americans have been relying on BMI, body mass index, as an indicator of obesity and the health risks associated with obesity. Like heart disease and diabetes, however, according to Dr. Margaret Ashwell of the UK, a consultant in nutritional science specializing in obesity, BMI is not the most accurate way to determine whether a person is overweight or not and the risk for these diseases. Instead, Ashwell suggests using your waist to height ratio to determine your risk. And again, I will say this, that if we went to waist to height ratio, a large, much, much larger number of people would be considered obese and morbidly obese. A much larger percentage of people would be considered obese and morbidly obese. And most of the gym bros I know who are lean would no longer be considered, that we would all just be considered healthy. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's just valid, you know? It's the true measure. Your BMI is a measure based on your combination of weight and height. Predetermined ranges of BMI are used to determine how healthy a person's weight is, according to the National Heart, Lung, and Body uh, Blood Institute. Uh, the BMI chart does blah, 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 blah. Um, however, the problem is this method. It does not account to actual fat distribution through the body. For example, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito both have BMIs of 34, despite their vastly different body builds. In Schwarzenegger's case, muscle weight hikes up his BMI, even though he has a little body fat. And on the other hand, Danny DeVito's short stature should uh, could downplay his risk of health problems uh, related to obesity. I will also say that the, the, the difference is that Arnold also did a bunch of fucking uh, juicy things. How to measure your waist to height ratio. Instead of relying on BMI, the sole indicator of your person's uh, risk, uh, Ashwell asserts the importance. Take the measurements, simply measure how tall you are, and use this, uh, use this piece of string of flexible measuring tape, then fold it in half and place it around your waist. Ideally, your waist would be less than half of your, uh, left your height. So if the two ends of the string don't meet or overlap, you're fucked. Uh, I'm just, I'm ad-libbing on that. 
Uh, if the string does not fit around your waist, losing just 5% of your total body fat could have a significant impact on not only your weight, but your potential health risks like heart disease and diabetes. So here's another one. Let's see how we go. Waist to height ratio is better than BMI. Waist to height ratio is a better uh, predictor of heart disease and diabetes risk than BMI. According to a new research, this was done in 2012. According to the new research represented in scientific meeting recently, uh, study leader, Dr. Uh, Dr. Margaret Ashwell, an independent counsel and, and for former science director of the British Nutrition Foundation, presented the findings in the 19th Congress of Obesity in Lyon, France on Saturday, May 12th. Keeping your waist circumference less than half your body weight can increase your life expectancy for every person in the world, said Ash, uh, Ashwell, as reported in the Telegraph. Thus, a man who is six feet tall or 72 inches tall should keep his waist under 36 inches, and a woman who is 5'4 or 64 inches tall should keep her waist measured under 32 inches. Ashwell said the measure should be considered as a screening tool. And even though we don't, uh, one of the reasons why I don't think we do is because they want you fat. Uh, they want you fat, you see? Um, the idea of using waist to height ratio uh, the, to predict cardiometabolic risk is not new, but it's common, uh, but it's, but is coming, is coming to prominence as more studies reveal its value. At the meeting, she, uh, Ashwell represented the findings of a study that analyzed the health of 300,000 people. So we did see the one that only had 81 people. This is 300,000 people and found that waist height ratio is a better predictor of high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, and B then BMI. BMI, short for body mass index, is a widely used measure for obesity. It is a ratio of the person's weight in kilograms to the square in their height in, me in meters. However, it does not take into account the distribution of fat around the body. Abdominal fat affects organs like heart, liver, kidneys, and more uh, adversely than fat around the hips and bottom. Uh, bottom. Uh, I don't know why I needed to say that in, say that British. Uh, in terms of cardiometabolic risk. Last year, Ashwell co-authored a paper on the increasing importance of using waist to height ratio to assess cardiometabolic risk and pleaded for scientists to use this consistent terminology to express the ratio so it can easily be uh, uh, searched in their literature. An, advance, an, an advantage of waist height ratio is, a simpl it is the simplicity of the health uh, message, keep your waist circumference less than half your body weight. And again, this is from 300,000 people being studied to show that it is a greater predictor of high blood pressure, type two diabetes, heart attack, strokes, than BMI. As I have been saying, Jesus fucking Christ, it gets to be old after a while. No shit. An advantage of waist-to-height ratio is the simplicity of the health me uh, message. Keep your waist circumference less than half your height. This is much easier, uh, though, to hold in mind than BMI, where not only do you have to, do the, uh, have to work out the ratio of your weight in kilos to the square of your height in meters, but also remember that the health, uh, that it, what is the healthy range. To measure your waist circumference accurately, you can just use a tape measure as we blah, 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 blah. Uh, you should measure it midway between your lower rib right here and your iliac crest, the top of pelvic. So right midsection, like lower rib right here, right here, iliac crest. So right there. So about two fingers above your belly button, as I've always said. Glad I had my zipper up. Uh, to met, uh, We already got through there. So here's another one. Study shows that obesity paradox does not exist. Weight to height ratio is a better indicator of outcomes in patients with heart failure than BMI. This one is from recently, and I wanted to go over it again because we've got a lot of people still talking about like, well, there's the LPC paradox, which means that when you're fatter, you're actually healthy. Shut the fuck up. Just lose the fucking weight, you fucking fat fucks. Um, let's see. New research has debunked the idea that there is an obesity paradox whereby patients with heart failure who are overweight or obese are are thought to be less likely to end up in the hospital or die than people of normal weight. The study, which is published in the European Heart, uh, Heart Journal today, Wednesday, uh, that was the 22nd of March, 2023, shows that if doctors measure the ratio of waist to height in their patients, rather than look at their body mass index, the supposed survival advantage for people with BMI of 25 kilograms uh, uh, to meters squared or more completely disappears. The obesity paradox relates, uh, relates to counterintuitive findings suggesting that Although people are at a greater risk of developing heart problems if they are overweight or obese, once a uh, person has developed a heart condition, those with higher BMIs appear to be do better and were less likely to die than those of a normal weight. And there's, this could be for many reasons. One, there's like how long have they been fat? How long have they been skinny? Um, you know, uh, did the people die just because they were going to die anyway from cardiovascular disease? Like there's so much, it's just 
it was literally a, it was literally the obesity paradox was done to in fact make fat people feel better about being fat. I truly believe that. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see here. The obesity paradox related to the counterintuitive findings suggesting that although people are at a greater risk of developing uh, uh, heart problems if they are overweight or obese, once a person has developed a heart condition, those with higher BMIs appear to do better and were less likely to die than those with normal weight. Various explanations have been suggested, including the fact that once someone has developed a heart problem, some extra fat is somehow protective against the further heart problems uh, and, and death, especially as people who develop severe and chronic illness often lose weight. And if you don't have a lot of weight to lose, blah, 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 right? John uh, McMurray, professor of uh, medical cardiology in the University of Glasgow, Glasgow uh, who led the latest research, said, it has been suggested that living with obesity is a good thing for patients with heart failure and a reduced eject, uh, ejection fraction. By the way, ejection fraction is the amount of blood pushed out of your left ventricle. Um, a healthy ejection fraction should be between 55 and 70 percent. So every time your heart beats out of your left ventricle, it should push 55 to 70 percent of the blood out of your left ventricle. For those of you that didn't know what that was. Uh, which is the which is when the main chamber of the heart, the left ventricle, is unable to squeeze out the normal amounts of blood. We knew this could be, not be correct, and that obesity would uh, must be bad rather than good. We recognized that part of the problem was that BMI is a weak indicator of how much fatty tissue the patient has. As Professor Stan Volen, uh, something, consultant cardiologist and Dr. Ryos, Ryos uh, Sato, uh, research fellow at both University of Göttingen. Uh, Göttingen uh, the medical center in Germany, I, I don't know why I needed the German accent either, uh, right in, accomplished edit, in, in an accompanying editorial, BMI fails to account for the body body's composition of fat, muscle, and bone, where and where the fat is distributed. Would it be feasible to assume that American professional wrestler, more muscle, and a Japanese sumo wrestler, more fat, uh, with the same BMI, could have a similar risk of cardiovascular disease? The same is true for a person such as Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, when he was younger, the Terminator, with a BMI of around 30. The study published today is the first to look at different ways to measure the size, proportions, and in patients, including BMI, all, but also orthopedic measures, anthropometric measures, orthopedic, anthropometric measures such as waist to height ratio, waist circumference, and waist to hip ratio, and adjusting the patient's outcome to take account for the factors that play a role in or prediction or predict these outcomes, such as levels of uh, nutrient peptides, hormones that are secreted in the blood when the heart is under pressure as with heart failure. Uh, nutrientic peptides are the single most important pro uh, prognostic variable in patients with heart failure. Normally levels of nutrientic peptides rise as people with heart failure, but patients living with obesity have lower levels than those with no of normal weight. Professor Murray and colleagues analyzed data from uh, 1832 women, 6,567 6, men, uh, with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction who were enrolled in a Paradigm HF International Randomized Control Trial taking place in 47 countries and six continents. When the patients were randomized, doctors collected data on BMI, blood pressure, uh, anthropometric measures resulting from blood tests, me uh, medical histories and treatments. The researchers were, uh, were interested in which patients were hospitalized with heart failure and who died from it. An obesity survivor paradox showed lower death rates from people with BMIs of 25 uh, kilograms per meter or more, but this was eliminated when research is adjusted to result to take into account all factors that can account for outcomes, including levels of nutrient peptides. First author of the study, Dr. Jawad Butt, uh, also re uh, a research fellow at Copenhagen University Hospital uh, who carried out the analysis said the paradox is far less evident when we look at the waist to height ratios, but and it disappears after adjusting for prognostic variables. After adjustments, both BMI and waist to height ratio show that more body fat was associated with a greater risk of death and hospitalization for heart failure, but this was, it was more evident with waist to height ratio. When looking at waist to height ratio, we found that 20% of the people who uh, with the most fat had 39% increase uh, risk of being hospitalized with heart failure compared to people with the bottom 20%. Our study then shows there was no obesity survival paradox when we use better ways of measuring body fat. BMI does not take into account the location of fat in the body and its amount of relative, uh, relative to muscle or the weight of the skeleton, which may differ from sex, age, and race. And heart failure specifically retained fluid also contributes to body weight, 
it is in, uh, so what they're saying is with heart failure, you have things called congestive heart failure where fluid builds up in your chest cavity and also uh, oftentimes in your extremities as uh, edema, which is swelling. Um, so obesity is not good and is a patient and is pa is bad in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. These observations raise the question as to whether the weight loss might improve outcomes, and we need uh, trials to test this. In the UK, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE, now recommends that waist to height ratio instead of BMI is used for the general population, and we should support this for our patients in the future. So I am going to go now. I don't think I need to keep going. I mean, uh, is waist height ratio best predictive indicator of hypertension incidences? A cohort study. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. A result, total of 471 patients with a mean age of 38.9, plus or minus 12.3 uh, years, were indicated in phase one. The follow-up was 13.2 years, and 207 subjects developed HTN, BMI, uh, waist comfort and waist height ratio were associated with the risk of HTN uh, incidences and had similar power in, predict in predicting the disease. However, the, associate, the association were only significant in women. The cutoff points were uh, with a better HTN and predictive capacity we're in agreement with uh, current recommendations, except for uh, uh, waist circumference in men. And then we get to these things. Obesity paradox debunked and new research. We are, we've already talked about this. So uh, that is my rundown of the science of why the obesity paradox was literally something made because fat people didn't want to admit that being fat is in fact bad for them. That we should, if you don't like BMI, if you think BMI is so racist and it makes you a racist, let's use waist to height ratio. You're going to be really fucked at waist to height ratio. If you're morbidly obese, if you're a BMI of 35, unless you are a bodybuilder at a BMI of 35, you are going to be found fat as fuck. It, it, I mean, like, it, it, we should literally have that measure, fat as fuckness, because... A BMI of 35 or above, unless you have a large amount of muscle mass, and I mean a large amount of muscle mass, you are indeed fucked fucked. Reality exists, just as I've always said. Um, I'm going to go to questions now. I did want to tell people that we do take this very seriously. Uh, we try to help people get their waist down. Uh, one of the, the several of the ingredients, Slimaluna, Thinogen, KSM 66, uh, uh, all of them, uh, th then no morbidity, which is right up here, they all help with waist circumference in clinical human testing. Alchemy, which will be coming out here in about a month, Alchemy also helps with waist circumference, but also helps with blood sugar levels and glucose levels. But you can get no morbidity right now at tigerfitness.com, ambrosiacollective.com, and vitamin shop. You can even go into a vitamin shop and pick one up. Take three capsules a day, the same time every single day, and then try to drink an ounce of fluid per pound of your body mass, you will not be hungry or nearly as hungry. I can't say not, but you will not be nearly as hungry. You will start getting your waist measurement down. And if you have a hard time building up these habits to do so, we do also have coaching. My wife actually did a, 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 a couch to 5K run today with people. Boom. And you can get that right here also. So I'm going to talk. I'm going to, I'm going to go to this person. Uh, sorry for my previous super chat four days ago when I mentioned a particular symbol. Didn't know that that was bad in the West. It's a lucky charm here. It's, I mean, it's, I can guarantee you that YouTube would have struck me down for it. I mean, I, that's just reality. Um, let's see here. Hey, Alan, have you started gardening yet? We grow sprouts and stuff in the aquaponics. We got, we got pea sprouts. Uh, pea, we have pea shoots uh, right now that I'm probably going to harvest tomorrow and we'll make a nice little salad out of it. Um uh that's by the way it's supposed to be alan how bad is a waist height ratio of 0.5 well i just did a, like a whole long spiel that you should try to keep it under point, uh, 0.52 you should try to keep it under 0.5 i wouldn't say it's super bad but i wouldn't say it's good either i would say it's unhealthy my mom is 68 with diabetes high blood pressure she often calls my friends fat and my and myself when people say she's also fat she says well when i was younger i had a 26 inch waist i mean we've known it for a long time but still 68 she, I mean, that it's, there's no, there's no reason to be fat. None. There's no reason. Uh, my mung green scouts grew out of the jar, uh, le grew, grew, uh, grew roots and leaves in a jar. That's amazing. It's so, it's so amazing and easy to do. Minus 0.56. So I'm basically uh, a basketball at this point. Azalea, here is our coaching. 
please do take us up on this. We have one month, three month, and six month offers. We can absolutely help you get to a healthy weight. We can help you build the healthy habits you need to get there. That I, I, I highly suggest it. Highly, highly suggest it. I'm going to scroll up a little bit, and you guys start asking questions. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I have no idea how people even find their ribs. They probably can't. They should just take the widest part of their the widest part of their stomach then, when they can't find their ribs, because that's truly uh, the study was led by Tess Holiday. That's funny. It's funny. I'm over 20 weeks prego and I can still see my ribs. I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand what's gone wrong with the population. We are morphing into blobs. It's a, we are becoming a bad parody movie of a kind of a cross between idiocracy, Hunger Games, and Wally. Like, have, has anybody noticed that? Like, idiocracy, Hunger Games, and Wally are all kind of like meshing into this like weird universe we live in. Like, look at Hollywood. Look at the music awards. Tell me that that does not remind you of the Hunger Game people from the Capitol. Like they fucking fat, weird fucking dressing. They think they're fucking amazing when they're really just fucking, if, if they had to deal with regular person life for a day, they'd probably fucking break down and fucking melt into a puddle. And then we've got the fucking idiocracy where people are such followers that they are completely devoid and not capable of critical thinking. And then we've got the fucking Wally, which is most of the population is fat as fuck and sits on their ass all the goddamn time. It's crazy. Uh, suspicious bird. I've noticed that sewing pattern sizes are different, uh, are wildly different to clothing sizes. I usually, I, I'm usually a size two to four, but when I'm at least uh, a 10 for patterns. Wow. That's, that's kind of interesting. Nobody who's five, eight or five, nine around 150 should be a size four. Nobody bring back vintage standards. I agree with this. I agree. Uh, can we join a class on the app when uh, you link them, even if we didn't sign up before? Yes, you can Addy. Absolutely. We, and we try to link them every single time. Like, uh, the only ones that I, I haven't been linking is my TRX workouts because, frankly, it's not something people should just kind of jump into. You should sign up because uh, I did want to say, though, starting next, starting in July, I'm going to start the TRX program that Crystal wrote for me from the very first day so people can start from the first day. You can pick up a TRX system literally at Walmart for 15 bucks, um, and it's a great home gym, great home gym, and we will go from day one on. Uh, but the other ones, yes, as soon as we share the link, you can just join because we share the Zoom link for you to get on there uh, in the app. And that is in the app, people. So join the app. Get on that shit. Join the app. And here we go. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Good, good, good. Uh, I suppose you're in a coma. Uh, it could be helpful to have some calories to draw from. Possibly, yes. Medical laboratory scientists here, uh, many patients with heart failure are either thin or grossly out of shape or morbidly obese. Thank you. Waist height ratio makes complete sense, and it's uh, how, the world, uh, how the world automatically sees, measures everything else in the world, length by width by height. Yep. Jess, Jessica, I completely agree. Uh, there, is no, there is no in between. It's like two extremes and, uh, and no in betweens. Uh, let's see. Addy, once you sign up for the app, you can join any of the classes. Crystal and Alan usually post the Zoom links in the chat. Thank you very much, Jessica. I appreciate you. Uh, gray area is very hard for people to understand. Exactly. Only old people and fat people uh, when I took my mom to cardiologist. Yep. Grandma also COPD. I'm very sorry to hear that. That's, 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 that's tough. Grandma also smokes like a raging firehouse. Very sorry to hear that, too. Um, let's see. The pulmonary and cardiology waiting rooms are elderly people and obese people with very few healthy looking individuals out there. I completely agree with you. Uh, completely. Thank you, Jessica. I just wanted to be sure I, I would not try to join a class. I, uh, I couldn't because I didn't sign up. You can join the class. If, she po if we post a link, you can join the class. We just ask you to try to be there no later than like four minutes after the, the start of the class, because that way we can then lock the classroom and we can just not we can do, worry about the stuff we're doing. Uh, let's see. Patricia Burns. Hey, Alan. Hey, everyone. I get my no morbidity delivered today. Boom. That's outstanding. Get yours at Vitamin Shop or TigerFitness.com or, no at, uh, or at AmbrosiaCollective.com. Get it right now. My waist to height ratio is about 0.43. That's about what mine is, too. 0.43. So, um, they are getting what they want from, from what they said on the news. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. They're pretending like, oh, BMI is racist, blah, blah, it's awesome. Yeah, but what you don't understand is that more of you are going to be labeled as obese if we use waist to height ratio, you stupid fucks. It's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Any questions? Any? Andrea Tharp, getting, uh, getting coaching for my birthday. That is outstanding, Andrea. That is outstanding. Lulu, just uh, Lula, just ordered my no morbidity. That is outstanding to hear. Also, I'm loving the sprouts thing. I grow a jar every uh, uh, every week, and I eat them with eggs. That's oh, with eggs that would be good. My waist, uh, my waist height ratio is 32 inches. When uh, I was at that or just a bit under, everyone said I looked unhealthy. So I don't know. Well, their opinion on what on you looking unhealthy is skewed by people being fat as fuck. This I just literally. What don't you know? Uh, I, like, I, seriously, I, w- I would like to understand, like, like w- random ass people who are likely fat as fuck themselves tell you that you don't look healthy. But studies of 300,000 people showing more correl- that it's more correlative to heart disease, type 2 diabetes, stroke, those sorts of things. Like, so the random ass people who want to make themselves feel better about themselves or the actual science. Uh, you do the math. Let's see. Let's see. Perfect combination of dystopian futures. Yep, it is. It is very bad. I am classified as overweight mid-range uh, by my BMI scale, but my waist to height ratio is 0.48. So I guess I'm doing something right. You absolutely are doing something right. You know, the, and a lot of this is. I mean, this is true for a lot of people. Like, you know, I, I think what this does it takes out the uh, the possibility of like, well, this the you know this ethnicity of people carries more weight in their lower legs or their ass, uh, like. The waist measurement is the measurement. The waist measurement is the one that people should look for, you know? Or Brave New World, people there were putting uh, youth and mood drugs constantly. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you, on Jessica, I appreciate you, too. Jessica is fucking uh, just, she is absolutely, absolutely fucking being an animal with her workouts. So proud of you. So proud of you. I prefer uh, waist height ratio. BMI always wanted me to be underweight. I can imagine. Uh, please plan to talk again soon for the hunger management group. I enjoy this so much. I, yeah, you know what? I, we will. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, what she's talking about is like periodically, like once a month or once every two months, we try to have just a live, just for the people in the hunger management support group on the app. Alan, do you eat bacon? I hear conflicting things about it. I eat it one to two times a week. I eat bacon occasionally. Uh, uh, I, you know, not, not often, but probably once a week. So. Three months coaching means the course of uh, of is three month, or is it like a course for longer duration? But payment is every three months. It's three months of coaching, the duration and the payment. Like it's one payment that you pay for three months. Like it's one payment you pay at one time, and then the coaching is three month block. So you buy one time payment of three months block of coaching, and you can get that right here. Just like the just like the six month coaching is a one time block. Uh, one-time payment for a six-month block that works out to like seventy dollars, less than seventy dollars a month. So you should take you, people should take us up on that one because there's only a few more left. Uh, I just did my waist to height, waist to height, and it's 0.17. I hope I did it correctly. You did not. My waist is 30 inches, and my height is 66 inches. In centimeters, that's 167. So what you would do is divide 30 by 66, and that's not 0.17. See, Professor Mike, what's going on? It's a great day when Alan is speaking facts. Always refreshing. Thank you, Professor Mike. I hope you're doing great, buddy. Uh, let's see. If I did it correctly, my waist to height ratio is 0.17. Yay. It's not. You didn't do it correctly. You did not. You did not. I can't. I, off the, I don't know why you think, think you got to 0.17, but if it's 30 inches divided by 66 inches, it's 0.45. But you're still healthy. 0.17 would be way too thin. Something would be wrong with you. Mine's 0.45, too close to not being healthy for my like. Shy, I want to get mine down some more too. I'm pretty good where I'm at. I think mine, I don't think mine will get much smaller. Hey, Alan, hit in the gym five times a week this uh, uh, this month. Thank you for keeping me motivated in your content. Thank you very much, Remy. I hope you have a great uh, great time at the gym. If you're doing it five times a week, th- five times a week this uh, this month, try to. In, if you don't want to hit the gym all the time, five times a week, uh, let me. Uh, let, let me uh, let me make sure that you like you, you, you know, like just try to find something else to do, you know, five times a week. But I love I love it. Love it. Love it. Let's do it. Ratio. Mine turns out. Blah, blah, blah. 
Your last live with Razorbread didn't get uploaded on Spotify. Just wondering if it's a glitch. You know what it is? It's I forgot to hit publish. So it'll be up later on the day. Thank you very much. Alan, is there a technical difference between obesity and morbidly obese? Yes, absolutely. Uh, obesity by waist to height standard is between 0.53 for men and 0.54 for women and 0.59. So the top bracket being 0.59, that's obese, right? Anything over 0.59 for either of them is morbidly obese. Uh, just like obese is over 30 BMI if you're going by BMI and morbidly obese is over 35 BMI. Great question. I'm pretty petite. Uh, I'm comfortable now, but I've always tried to do better. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You're killing it too. Absolutely killing it. All right, folks, what other questions do we have? I've got about five more minutes and then I'm going to get going. I've got some plumbing I got to do. I got to fix a sink and then I'm going to do some cooking uh, because I'm going to make uh, grit cakes and I've got a really good sauce I prepped the other day of hot sausage. Uh, it's like a, it's like a spaghetti sauce. It's just, you know, uh, it's just, uh, it's like a good spaghetti sauce, but it's got a hot Italian sausage and Wagyu beef in it. It's totally delicious. I can't wait. So five times, five times away is too much, uh, to the gym. Absolutely not. It's fucking seven day, seven days a week is not too much for activity. As long as you're recovering, we're, we're, we're animals. We're supposed to move every day. It, like a hundred years ago, if you didn't move around every single day, you didn't eat. So absolutely not too much. Uh, thank you. I, uh, I know. Uh, I I now know I was morbidly. I, I was morbidly obese. Very likely. Uh, I did get that dress and go to the grocery store. Good. 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 I asked. Uh, I asked a question, but I don't think you can see it. Ask it again. The fuck. Uh, what do you do? What do you do for your pickled onions? I say, Crystal, can I please have some pickled onions? I think they're delicious, and I love how you make them. And then she makes them. Um, how long do you envision a person to be on no morbidity before it's, uh, it's time to wean off? I'm never coming off of it. Like just because I'm controlling my binge eating. I'm two, two years, five months, three days today. Uh, I'm never coming off of it ever, 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 ever coming off of it. I'm going to stay on it and alchemy forever, uh, to guarantee that I give my wife the 90 years, 90 year lifespan that, uh, that I, Absolutely fucking, uh, absolutely fucking love. I, I, I love her so much. I can't wait. I can't wait for the next 40 some years or 30, 30, 38 years. And then, and then some, you know, nine pounds when I'm 90. Uh, but I would suggest that once you feel like you've got your habits in order, like once you have, uh, once you have your habits in order, you can go from three capsules a day down to two capsules a day. See if your habits still stay in order down to one capsule a day. See if your habits still stay in order and then go to none. Then you can always pop back onto it if you need to. But I would suggest a good to build healthy habits from it. I would suggest a good three months. I really would. I try to do active rest days and, uh, unless I'm totally exhausted. So I lift five days a week. I'm active. I'm active seven days a week, uh, but I work out six days a week at an extremely intense level. So I have taco meat over roasted veggies for dinner and maybe some grilled corn. Oh, that sounds really good. Really, really, really good. I only do sedentary rest days like four times a month. I hear you. Uh, if it's a dumb question, you can ignore. Okay. Uh, Alan, potatoes, yes or no? Um, I eat potatoes fairly often. Uh, the potatoes are my, what, uh, uh, white potatoes are my chosen form of carb up. I love them. I'll bake off a bunch, like a bunch of small white potatoes, and I'll have like three or four as a snack later on at night, just dipping some hot sauce on them. I absolutely love it. Can't wait for product two, also known as alchemy. Uh, alchemy, it's right here. A-L-K-E-M-I, hashtag, we have a world to save. Um, you got to be about it. Uh, and it is going to be about $41.99 a month from what we from what we cost it out. $41.99 a month. So, and I'm sure there'll be a deal where the two of them together, uh, alchemy and no morbidity will be under, under uh, it'll be under $79.99. Most important part of the statement of John was, was, I agree, was morbidly obese. Morbid and morbid obesity, does it really mean deadly obese? Yes, it absolutely does. That's what the word morbid means. Uh, once I pay off the rest of my student loans, uh, worst ever mistake, I want to, uh, to to consistently live on Nomo. Hell yeah, motherfucker. It makes shit so much easier. Um, I have maybe one or two slug days a month, usually have uh, have too much to do. 
I posted what I eat a day as a fat chick and got told I didn't look, uh, I did, I don't look fat. Trust me, this face is very deceiving. And what is considered a binge? Is it a specific amount of calories or can it be a mindless eating like 300 calories? I wouldn't necessarily say mindless eating of 300 calories, but if you were just find yourself eating and eating, uh, it doesn't really matter the calories. If it's like an out of control eating, 300 calories can be like a small, like mindless snack. But if you find yourself eating and then going about uh, and, then, and then grabbing more and then eating again and then grabbing more and it, like it's like you can't control yourself. Like for me, I always classify it as it's like watching a movie of myself eat and like wanting to stop. But I can't stop, you know, uh, creatine, yay or nay? Absolutely. Yay. I took creatine today and I take it almost every day. And let's see. How do you get back in exercising after surgery? You talk to your physical therapist and your doctor, not some guy uh, who has no idea your physical capabilities, what type of surgery it was, anything like that on online. And by the way, anybody, any, any fitness, any fitness YouTuber that would answer this question live that in any other way, besides talk to your physical therapist, and doctor is full of fucking shit and you should never listen to them again. Like literally like talk to your doctor. You just had surgery. Talk to your doctor. How you doing? What's going on? For me, a binge is feeling out of control. Exactly. Christina, uh, it took a little bit for Nomo to work for, uh, for me, but once it did, uh, along with the berberine, I've lost 41 pounds. Boom! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Do you have collagen? I eat a lot of, uh, I eat a, a lot of beef, so no, I, I really don't do extra collagen. Uh, but some people should, so... Uh, I'm about a year and a month uh, binge free. That is outstanding. That is outstanding. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. I love it. Binging is like is like a black blacking out. Can't remember when you finished the. Oh, yes, absolutely. I like that too. I like that too. All right. So, guys, any last questions before I'm done? Because we've been at this almost an hour, and I just wanted to show that again. I fucking told you so. We should be using waist to height ratio. It is a much more predictive uh, tool. Then even BMI, when it comes to cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, um, stroke, those sorts of things, it is a much greater predictor. And it would, in fact, categorize many, 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 many more people as obese and morbidly obese and very and way less uh, people who are fit like myself as obese. So and does does that sound like it's a little self-serving? I already knew I wasn't obese, but yes. So um, it's funny. It's very, very funny. So let's all use waist to height ratio. And like literally you can visibly observe when a person is wider around or when, when the person is half as wide as they are tall, they are not healthy and they should do something about it. I'll rephrase my question. So you see it. Can morbidly obese women build uh, muscle during weight loss? Anybody can build muscle during weight loss. Uh, but it, it's going to be slow and it's not going to outpace your weight loss uh, by any stretch of the imagination. It's not going to outpace your weight loss, uh, especially for an adult female. If you build five pounds of muscle in a year, you're absolutely fucking crushing it. Uh, absolutely fucking crushing it. Um, however, if you haven't worked out in a while, there's a thing called muscle memory where your muscles will come back. But uh, yes, you can, you can build a muscle mass from an obese state while you're losing weight. Um, lean state, much harder, but from an obese state, yes. Scale is not moving, but I see differences. Still frustrating, though. I hear you. I hear you. But uh, but the scale, the scale not moving, uh, that could be a hydration thing. Try to increase your fluid. Try to make sure you get proper rest, sleep. And if you have any other questions, we can't help with that. At, uh, here's the coaching link one more time. Uh, how much protein should you have uh, a day? 189 pound, 189 pound, five foot five inch woman. Well, you should probably end up weighing somewhere around 120 to 25 to 140 pounds. So I would say 140 grams would be probably pretty good in that area, give or take, give or take 20 grams. I really do not want lab work done because of my high protein diet compared with creat, uh, compared paired with creatine. High bun and creatine means kidney failure. My idiot NP will never refer me to a nephrologist. I, I don't know. Um, sugar and deep fried foods, which is worse? Both. Uh, I did three pills a day of Nomo for one month. Now I have been on two, uh, two pills a day for four months. No issues. Bam. That's awesome. 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 I'm working with Alan, uh, goal to lose 40 pounds by September 27th. And you're going to get there too. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 
I, I think I'm actually just seeing the muscle I, I have now that I'm getting very, really lean. That's that's pretty much where I'm at too. But anyway, guys, we are in an hour. This will be up and I'll post the other one up too that I, that, that I didn't press publish on. Hope all of you have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. I hope to talk to all of you soon. God damn.